You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 Radio Show on 92kills.com. Hey, go ahead, Bree. Hola, heart. Hey, to go ahead, be though. Go ahead, be. Hey, you know, I'm let him. You go ahead, Cause he, cause you know, cause he know he, he normally don't sing, so I'm gonna let him have it. Whatever he want to do. All right, y'all, we back. It's Catch-22 Radio, Man Cave style. It's Drewski, it's B, it's Ray, and we have a special guest in the building, Mr. Tobacco Ryan. Yeah, man, we here. Tobacco Ryan, the Tobacco, the Ghetto Samurai. Woo! Okay, oh, so why Tobacco Ryan? Do that again? <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> hey, that was pretty cool. You know what's hey, crazy is he got that on one of his songs. I was like, is he whining yeah, in every the back? Song, almost every song, so, yeah. All right, so I got it. I need an explanation for all this. Tobacco, first of all, then the rind part, then the wu and the samurai. Where all this come from, fam? Ooh. It's all originated in my mind, my man. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I used to go by Professor. That was my first, you know what I'm saying, for, uh, rap name. I'm so glad you changed. <laughs> white kid that <laughs> huh? Professor's the white kid that dribbled for A1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. The boy yeah. was cold. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I went by Professor and... uh. I stopped rapping after that, lost drive. So when I decided to come back, I wanted to come back with a whole new wave, new everything. So I changed my name to Tobacco Ryan. And you know, tobacco is a plant, it's addictive, keeps people coming back. Uh, conversation starter, uh, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. But that's the short, you know what I'm saying, spectrum. Then Ryan just wanted to pick a character outside myself, you know what I'm saying, like an alter ego. Feel me, and then the ghetto samurai. That's when I get ratchet. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My ratchet side, my more creative side. So, yeah. And then I wanna know your real name was Ryan, fam. A lot of people do. So I got used to it. You know, people call me that now. But yeah. That's dope. I mean, if your if your rap name is Tobacco Ryan, you can't say, hey, "What's up, it's Francois. It's nice to meet you." You know, you can't you can't come with your real name at that point. Yeah, but a lot of times certain things come from somewhere. That's why you have to always ask like, where, mm-hmm. where all this come from. Yeah. How you end up choosing that name? How you end up choosing that? Bro, I was really just brainstorming, and it just came across, and I was just like, "Why this keep coming across my mind?" So I'm like, "What would be the creative reason?" And that's that's what I came up with. So and everybody like it. They asked me why. It's a conversation starter. I and mean, somebody in, introduce myself to somebody, like, yo, tobacco, tobacco. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And boom, go from there. Oh, you do music. Yeah, that's how it get going. That's dope. Yeah. That's really dope. Alright, so you kinda fall in uh in a more of a project than a single lane. Um as far as like your creative process, like how do you go into the booth create music? Uh I always have my music like ready and created before I get into the booth because mm-hmm. I don't like wasting time in the booth. A lot of people can go in the booth and, you know what I'm saying, vibe and play around. But me personally, I like to do all my vibing uh, beforehand, you know what I'm saying, have everything down packed beforehand. Then when I get in the booth, I just like tackle it, everything at once, you know what I'm saying, like that. So that's how I go. So you usually write by yourself? Or how, what is the writing process like for you? Do you have like, you know, certain music playing? Yeah, uh, basically, um, I got my producer, Tara Rhodes, so I have him send me beats, and then once I get the beat, I don't really just write lyrics, I just harmonize, make melodies. Once I come up with the melody for it, then I'm like, okay, this is catchy. So then I add words and lyrics to that melody. Then once that's done, if I'm rapping on it, then that's when I start writing my raps and the raps take long because I don't just really rap anything. I make sure everything I rap about have substance in some way and it's go over people's heads to where they have to keep catching and thinking. So the rapping part takes the longest. It might take me probably a month to write a full rap. But if I'm in my zone, I can really like write a whole rap in like a day or a week. So it depends. So seeing as you're not like a uh, single driven artist, like in the city of Houston, how hard do you feel like it would be for you to break as an artist? When you say single driven, what you mean? So, like, you know, you have the, the club bangers. Like, everybody's pushing that one single into the club. Mm-hmm. When I listen to your music, it's more of a total project. Everything kind of syncs together. Yeah. You know uh, what I mean? It's not, you're just not just putting out one song and I'm pushing that one song. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, um, my, uh, first, my first single was um, on this project was Just Smoke. And I was out for a year and I was pushing that and everybody, you know what I'm saying, was it was a vibe song. It was like a radio vibey, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um the club bangers I n- never really 
really, I always had them, but I never really put them out because I feel like that just, you know what I'm saying? I, I like to put out things that I'm, you know what I'm saying, experienced. Right. Uh, and then as far as like club bangers, I do have some that's going to be on my next project. And they like club, club bangers. Like, they okay. really. You feel like bangers. it's important to cater to that club banger crowd? But see, this is the thing with club bangers. Club bangers can be anything. You know what I'm saying? They can play uh, Frankie Beverly. That could be a club banger. Like, if I let go of the club banger, you feel me? So, a club banger is basically what's most liked. So, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, a club banger, whatever they like mm -hmm. and get the most traction, they'll play it in a club if the people like it. So. I guess what he's asking, like, as far as, like, we talking about singles, it's those four singles. This is this the thing that I'm going to mm -hmm. catch you to mm -hmm. be popular, to be, to go with this song, go with mm -hmm. that song. It's really paying attention to how to make a single instead yeah. of making a whole project where I'm really spitting, I'm giving substance, I'm giving knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I guess he's trying to figure out how to be on that substance, how do you get to break outside the city? Because it's easier to come up with one of those old time. It's old easier time. to be OT Genesis than be, be Crit. That's what I that's feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like projects is just like it just kind of because I have so many different lanes mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to just do a single and be like oh that's just tobacco rind like I got so many lanes that I could just like embody into and I just want like the world to know each lane that I can really tackle that's how the project thing just starts all right so you have a project out right now called uh, a beautiful addiction mm -hmm. pink tobacco a beautiful addiction Okay, so why why pink tobacco? I you I ain't never seen pink tobacco. You ever seen pink tobacco? Nobody has. So that's that's the thing. I wanted to like create some something new, like a new form of uh, an addiction. You should give out pink cigarettes. Could be whatever, whatever you think. Yeah. That would be dope. Pink cigarettes would be dope. I think that I would smoke them too. Because he smokes cigarettes, I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, but I think that'd be dope. Though. I think that'd be. I think it's a cool way to market. I don't yeah. know how you gonna get pick cigarettes, but I think it'll be dope. Though. That's a phone call. Anything can be done. Yeah, it's, it's easy. That's you know, you just gotta call. make it executed. That's all. That's <laughs> all. That, that. All right. So who do you listen to, man? Who who are the? Because we just had this argument that you said. I want that same energy. Yeah, that that same is that energy. Bro, you said Ty Dolla Sign is one of the greatest. Of all. You he said he you argued. He but he banged with the goat. Bro, I'll show you my playlist. You're gonna be like, who is who is this? Who? Cause, bro, my my like I listen to so many artists. Like I don't navigate away from nobody. Like unless it's just something I just ain't really feeling. But like I'm a moody person. So like when it comes to a certain mood, I might be playing the Beatles. I ain't gonna lie. If I might be in a mood where I'm playing, you know what I'm saying, Meek Mill, or you know what I'm saying, I might be playing Frank Ocean. I might be playing Ty Dolla Sign or or Drake. Jay Z, it depends on my mood, and so like I got a broad mood. But as far as my faves, I'm gonna definitely have to go with like uh, D'Angelo. Um, D'Angelo, um, I like Solange. Uh, of course, I respect like the Jay Z as far as the lyrics and uh, and it, the list go on, bro. Like, so is I it the difference? Because those type of people you start talking about D'Angelo, because like D'Angelo had his time with something something soulful there was something in it I, I kind of want to say we haven't seen before even with Simone there's just something different about yeah. her so is that what gravitates you to them that um the production my, my thing is um influence like if they can start something that will influence many more to come like that sound that little neo sound he was on at that at that particular time that was like a start of something you know what i'm saying with the um his 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 tracks like, D'Angelo, to me, was, like, one of the first to, like, he can do, like, 30 tracks in one song. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, his ad-libs and just all the little ranges he would do turned them down so much. Like, all those stacks and things, I felt like that was a new wave. of, And he added it with the Neo Soul, so it just was, like, something new to me. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Same as Solange. Like, Solange, she has the thing where she does a little high-pitched runs, and she stacks them, like. So I feel like if like if something new to where they can make an influence for other people to come and just inspire other people, I feel like those are the artists I kind of like gravitate to the most. So, yeah. So um, that's dope. It's very rare you hear somebody younger than you know what I mean thirty say D'Angelo. 
Uh -oh. three, he said three names in this interview already, which are the Beatles, Solange, and D'Angelo that you never hear people yeah. really talk about. I mean, if you look at like D'Angelo's camp, who's came out of his camp, like Anthony Hamilton was a background singer, Jill Scott, Angie yeah. Stone, like all them some backup for him, and now they're their own type of, you know what I mean, star. So, Maybe even bigger, that's crazy. yeah, yeah. That, that's crazy. So, um, you have a you have a single called "So What," right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's featuring Golden Child. Yeah. All right. So I don't know if anybody else caught it, but I did catch the sample from "So What" um, from Phil Mob. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. What inspired? Well, like, what what inspired you to make that type of track? Um, in in that in that manner, because it's it's a different type of track from for 2019. Yeah, it's a it's a, actually a long story. So basically, um, we was finishing up the project, and we was like, something is missing. Like, it's the song that's missing. So mm -hmm. we called the meeting. Uh, Bloom said is like the, the crew I run with. Bloom said we the music creators and all that. Uh, we called the meeting. We like, yo, we gotta come up with something. So, uh, me, Garden, Golden Child, uh, OG Prince, uh, we all we all stayed together. So um, we called Tori Rose, who was the producer, called them over, and we like, yo, we need to come up with this song because I feel like it's something missing, and I need that R&B vibe to it. So he was like, I right, bet. So we can like make something from scratch, and I'm like, cool. So I'm telling them, and it's, it's still not sticking. So we just kind of got sidetracked. He started playing beats, and we just like playing around. Then he came across that beat, and I was just like, "Bro, like, what is this?" And he was just like, "Oh," I was like, "Bro, this might be the one." Mm -hmm. And so, um, Golden Child was singing on it, and uh, we just started going there. Woo -hoo, yeah. Woo -hoo. And we was like, "Hey, that's what? What song is that from?" We was like, "That's um, uh, ain't that Sierra and Phil Mob?" He was like, "Yeah." I was like, bro, that's perfect because the listening party is going to be the 2000s party. And we can do so what to go into the 2000s party with the Field Mob song. Because my listening party was a 2000s theme. So mm -hmm. that was just perfect. That's how all that came along. And then it just became a, like a, a bank that everybody wanted to keep replaying over and over. So that's how So What came about. That's dope. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go into um, one of your singles off the project. Um, would like for you to introduce it. And then we'll come back. We got more with Tobacco Ryan. So can you introduce the single that you're going to have us listen to? What's good, everybody? It's your boy Tobacco Ryan. This single was the single that started it all for me. This is Black Man's Off the Project, Pink Tobacco, a Beautiful Addiction, Catch-22, Radio. Let's get it. Black Man's wrong. <laughs> nope. I was like, bro, he got a list of something. something. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So we just had like a very euphoric moment where everybody heard black romance and heard black men's like, ah, okay. <laughs> just hey, that's together, dope, though. You know that's dope, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, you know, we were uh, all on, while we were listening to the record, we was giving a lot of comparisons about like, you know what I mean, who the music sounds like, but it seems like everybody that we were naming has like a cult-like following. So would that be more of your lane or do you want the... Cause like Chance and and Wiz can like tour being independent. Mm -hmm. um, with are you looking for a label or are you looking to stay independent? Oh, uh, definitely independent. Yeah, definitely independent. So it's nobody you assign with. Uh, I'll be partners with some people, but the way I am, the way how I'm driven, I'm more like trying to be my own boss. And I think the independent route is what 2019 is all about. Right. I feel like this new generation really has to take, cause if we just keep, you know what I'm saying, signing, signing, signing like that, I feel like we'll still be behind five years from now. I feel right. like somebody gotta take a stand and be like, all right, look, let's, let's, let's do our own thing, be independent. And it worked for people, like, you know what I'm saying? Especially when the music good, you can be independent. Yeah, this is definitely saying? a DIY generation. Right. Um, so do you, do you feel like there's some artist that needs to be signed to a major? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, some people need um, need that push, need that help. Uh, some people uh, only make deals for their single. Right. Because that's only how much that person believe in them. They don't believe in them to get them money for a full project. They'll just push that one single because it's hot, and they know that's the only thing they could do. So with me, knowing my worth, I feel like the independent route is definitely what a bag is. So. so how do you get the masses to hear your music? What is the plan to get this in, to make Tobacco Ryan a household name? Uh, as far as just like... Period. Like, what do you, what do you think of the deal? Do you tour it? Do you 
Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, being consistent. Uh, videos definitely is a key factor. Uh, touring, merch, um, everything. Uh, the shows, I, I kind of, kind of trying to step away from the shows. I'm at this point now. Where I'm doing. I want to do my own shows. You know what I'm saying? Um, after my listening party and the love that I received, I realized that like, yo, like. It's people out here who gonna support if you just do your own thing and you do it right, you execute it right. So like now I'm into like doing my own shows, letting that be a way to get the name pushing, populating, and then moving around the city, moving around the state, moving around the uh, country. That's the whole thing, really. Just keep pushing. Cause I think everybody in the hip music like that, man. It's just I just don't know. Cause you know a lot of times we have those single artists don't want to. Yeah, I mean, like every every song that I've heard has been a vibe. It whether it's you know me slowed down, picked up, um, it's actually a vibe. So when you when you are are creating, um, is there is there a like a a mode that you would say that would what has hindered you from from creating in the past? That's what, what kind of like because the vibe that you give translates through your music. So, has there ever been a time that it's like I don't want to create um, this type of music? Like, uh, yes, because I wouldn't say there were times that hindered me that of me not wanting to create. Uh, I always wanted to create. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time when I didn't want to do it anymore in the public eye, I was like, you know, forget trying, I was like, I just want to do my own thing, like, for me, mm -hmm. but, you know what I'm saying, I got over that, of course, it was a downtime in my life, mm -hmm. but, like I said, when I did the Tobacco Ryan thing, and I've been pushing ever since, uh, so, as far as the creative process, like, it's so many elements I want to, like, reach, and want to, like, tackle into, mm -hmm. but I know, like, with the Pink Tobacco uh, project, I knew this is what was going to work. You know what I'm saying for that because the pink tobacco, the title itself is it's a drug. So when you hear it, it comes on like a drug. Like literally the first intro when you hear it, you automatically like it like gravitates you and puts you in a state like you're like damn. Then the second song it just like puts you on, you makes you focus. And then it starts turning up. Then it makes you sad. Then it's like it's it's like an actual drug. So I do want to do other projects to where I just want to create something else that's it's totally different from this all right so there is there a a, a producer that you would love to work with um that would kind of be like your dream record like who would produce tobacco's ryan's like dream record besides like the producer that you have now uh actually i've been talking to the guy i've been wanting to be my dream record so i'm working on that uh, we've been texting oh, but it's metro booming mm. yeah uh he actually heard the project and he likes it but um, he just he just a busy busy person. So, and also too like he also want to see me like get to a, that level to where he's like okay you work for it you know what I'm saying. So Metro's definitely one. Um, Tyler Greta production is crazy. He can produce like crazy. Him Kanye. Um, then there's some other ones like um, it's a guy named Jay Lewis. He pretty cold. Let's go on. There's a lot of talented producers that I want to work with. So what would be the, the best on the other end? What would be the best feature? Feature? Yeah. If you could just do a song, you could buy Dead or Alive, but you would like the best feature song. Dead or Alive? Mine would be Love Now. No, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I want to see that one. But uh, <laughs> I would say in his prime, uh, definitely Stevie Wonder would be like, bro, you're wild, <laughs> bro. I, look, hey. I'm thinking of so many people. Stevie Wonder like, was way, way like, off the radar, yeah, but live, live, I do bro. get it as a creator. Yeah, yeah. I get it. That's what he said yeah. in his prime, in that creative prime. Yeah, bro. I can see it. It's just I feel like I can see it yo, now. Yo, your mind going there creative. is just like the same thing as when you said D'Angelo, the Beatles, and yeah. Solange. Just, we just we weren't prepared. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Stevie Wonder, I ain't gonna lie, uh, Black Youngster too. 
Youngster. On that's the same two track. different that's spectrums. Like, on the same on track. On the same track would be awesome. So you want Stevie and Black Youngster on the same track? Mm. That's a different yeah, track. Like Stevie Wonder will open it up, open up, and then like the beat would drop, like the bass, and then Youngster would come in. And then, like, you created the song in your yeah, head. Yeah, I can hear it too, because like Stevie's on like the anti hook. It's not the hook, but he yeah, on like the hook. He's like the, the hook. he's like the, you know, it will be almost like a sample. But, but he's really still Stevie there. Wonder he's singing. singing it. You know oh. what I'm saying? Hey, bro, call me when you do that. I want, I want a piece of this. Turn it up, and you like, ooh, <laughs> yeah, it give you your stank face. Yeah. Then I come in with the vibe, and you know what I'm saying? That would be, be dope. When you find That's a Stevie dope. sample you're going to use, like, I want to be a part I of the I actually process. re-editioned a, a Stevie Wonder song, Close to You, that he performed. Okay. Um, 1970, something. But uh, actually, he, he got it from the Carpenters, and he re-enditioned it. And then um, I ended up re-enditioning it, too, so, yeah. Dope. Yeah. When, when you make this happen, we have to hear that first. Time. That was, bro, that I want to be in the building. Man. I want to be in the studio session. That, was, <laughs> that studio session gonna be legendary. Be crazy. It's almost like that. Uh, like when everybody's watching Kanye create that. Uh, that mic beat. It's kind of like like that's the simplest song, but yeah. nobody thought about sampling that part of the song. So. I also think Steve Wonder can see too. <laughs> Going into that, let us hear how you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> fam, it wasn't even close, bro. Hey, hey. Nah, bro. they do you have a video of him mind, looking bro. at his watch though. Yeah, <laughs> they got a video, they got going a video like this. of him catching a microphone when it fell. He felt it. He felt it. Nah, no, he, I'm, t- I'm telling you, he I felt seen it. Hey, hold on, no, 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 no. I seen no, him no. Uh, taking a picture look, of somebody. Look, look, look. I've seen Prince catch a mic behind his back, so it's kind of like a feeling. Like he didn't see it, he just knew where it was. He didn't know he was gonna catch it, but, but he tried to catch hey, it. Hey, hey, but he didn't look at his watch and do this. Like he looked at his watch, like what time it is. <laughs> Maybe he got one of the watches to talk to. Yeah, you. he got probably that. That's excusable. No, this is. I but, see. Yo, yo, Stevie this, wanted to shoat this free throw, and it wasn't nowhere. Near. But <laughs> at, the, at the same time, the crowd. Stevie, you know, it'd be funny if the crowd went wild. Like he no, hit it. Did. But if he would have hit it, it would have. Come on now. Yeah, if he exactly. would have hit it, then I would have been like, hey, No, yeah, he would have blew his cover. He, he would have blew his cover. Yeah. And Look. they did go wild when he when he missed that free throw. They went wild like he made it. He didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> they trash. <laughs> they so trash. Oh. All right, man. Tell them where they can find you on all social media and uh, where they can find your music at. For me. Yeah, on social media, you can find me, tobacco underscore Ryan. Uh, music, you can find it. It's streaming everywhere, all platforms. You can stream all the videos on um, YouTube. You can get the album, Apple, Spotify, Tidal, uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon. It's, it's lit, man. Tobacco Ryan. I don't get the pink tobacco merch you got on. Because yeah. until talking to you, I realized that's why you're wearing this pink tobacco Ryan. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, the merch, you can go to um, four, four Way Elite. Their, uh, their website have uh, merch. It's the pink tobacco merch. Also, I have the Ghetto Samurai shop online, uh, Teespring slash uh, Ghetto Samurai. You can get all the uh, album merch, and uh, we do have a store uh, in Houston. It's off of, oh my God, I can't even remember right now. But yeah, yeah we'll just follow me. Place. Just follow me on Instagram. Click the, click the link in my bio. All the info right there, and that's the easy way. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. So now we're about to go into a live. Mix of uh, Black Mance. We're gonna let uh, the Chop Star DJ. I ain't gonna make fun chop of him because he's gonna be in his uh, in his bag. But he's gonna live chop uh, Black Mance. And when we come back, we have another special guest in the building. It's Catch Twenty Two Man Cave Style. Rocking with the voice of the South. Catch Twenty Two Radio Show. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Tobacco Ryan, the Ghetto Samurai. We just did this dope interview with Catch 22, man. Make sure y'all go get the latest project, Pink Tobacco, Beautiful Addiction. Out streaming everywhere, available everywhere. Like I said, it's your boy, Tobacco Ryan, the Ghetto Samurai, Catch 22. We out.